TNTM The Show presents Talking Nerdy. With your hosts, Pablo Gunner, the Ambassador, and Marvin Goof, yo. And we're here to talk nerdy to you, as we have been for the last 13 years talking about comics, video games, movies, shows, all the nerd stuff, because we want to save you the time. We don't want you to waste your time. We want you to put your time into the best of the best. So we're willing to waste our time so you don't have to. So we're going to be covering Shogun. Now, another show that is finished for the month, and I think permanently finished from what I've heard, yeah. is Shogun well, that was on FX. Thing. Right, and so, yeah, based off of a book, and so I can't, I can't wait to get to, to bring this up again, but yeah, Shogun, it's a series on FX and about feudal Japan. We talked about it in the previous podcast, so if you mm -hmm. want to hear our part one, go check that out. This is part two, so we're going to move forward. Oh, it's been so good. Like, I know it's slow. Look, I know it's slow. And, I, and I'm, I'm going to bring it. If you don't like this show, sorry, but you're not intellectual enough. You like the... And that's okay. That's okay. Different strokes, different folks. But I'm just telling you, like, intellectuals, you like, you know, Japanese culture. You like other cultures. You want to learn about other stuff. You want to learn about history or uh, something that's based on a book. This is it. This is phenomenal. This is brilliant. I loved it. It was fantastic. It was so mm -hmm. great. Oh, my gosh. Crazy. Like, because it's just... It's just them playing chess, right? Like, it's yeah. just with people's lives, though. But what's great is that the main dude's not... He won't do it on a large scale. He's like, I don't want to sacrifice Japan. I don't want to sacrifice masses of people because that is Japan, right? Like, Japan is our people, and I'm not going to sacrifice swaths of people for a war so that I can end up being the winner. So he plays it out so geniusly that he uses his players, and it sucks because they end up having to sacrifice their lives. I'm not going to say who... But they end up having to sacrifice their lives. And he, he just plays them because he's like, this is what this person's going to do. So I'm going to use these things that I know they're going to do this anyways. So I'm going to use this and use them for, for my little ploy. And it's it's so messed up and it's so brilliant. Yeah, the way he gets it so he's like, well, what I can do is I can turn the person that they don't expect against uh, the main guy leading everything. And when I turn that person, they're all gonna fall like dominoes and go, "What? No, we ain't. Do We're not doing this." Political and then we can nice. just. <laughs> so basically, they're gonna go out to battle, and then suddenly an army that's not expected will go up behind them, and then they're just gonna be like, the other army's just gonna go join them, and then you get a surrender. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and which I will say that that finale was somewhat disappointing to me because I was expecting a giant battle, mm -hmm. and instead it was just like that where he said, this is how it's going to play out, and this is what's going to happen. So they don't even show it, but they show like a, it's like the vision of the future because mm -hmm. it does come to fruition yeah. or whatever. And, and he's like, I'm going to become Shogun. Yeah. Uh, but whole... it's in the name of peace, though, and that's yeah. what I loved about it is he goes... I'm trying to sacrifice the the few for the many. Yes. And that's what and it's messed up because he uses people, but at the same time, these people are also kind of getting what they've always wanted, right? Like the characters that he allows them to do these things, it's like they're doing what they would they wanted the whole way. Like uh, Mariko, like she ends up getting what she wanted. Yeah. You know in the way she wanted. Right. And which was epic and, and was I did not see coming, and it was so crazy, and I was like, wow. And and it's emotional, and it was, and yeah, it, it was absolutely, uh, it, it was, it's just so well done. It's such a beautifully shot show, and I'm like, oh, man, it's so high quality. The acting is top notch. I love all the actors in this, and it's so crazy. It's just phenomenal to see, see stuff like this, man, mm -hmm. to see, like, other cultures and then just other actors and stuff, like, you see, like, especially when they act in their own language, right? Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, wow, okay, this is like a whole different level we're seeing from them, right? Like, this is crazy. And it, it, was, it was just a really impressive uh, show all in all. Like I said, I was slightly disappointed with the conclusion because it was, it was built up and it was this slow build. And then, really, there was no great battle. But mm -hmm. that was also part of the genius of it. 
it was alluded. And the main because guy. Because the yes. main guy talks about Crimson Sky, mm. about this great battle he's going to do against Osaka. Mm. But really, he did it without every, anyone even noticing he did it. Well, That's incredible. And even his, even his <laughs> adversary, right, was yeah. like, it's going to be total war starting tomorrow, or, you know, whenever it happens, total war. And, and the adversary thinks he's got everything handled, and then he's going to go to war, battle, and everyone's going to turn on him. So, but yeah, it, it was brilliant. Really, when now reflecting back on that finale, I go, it really makes more sense that it would happen that way. Yeah. And it was brilliant that it happened that way. And so I have heard... They're like, that people kind of want a second season, but the people that have made the show, they're like, we have no intention. This was a one and done. There's not a sequel to the to the book. We're just going based off the book. So we have no intention of continuing this. This is it. It's a one and done and it's over. And I love stories that are like that where it's like, hey, there is an end game, you know, and that's it. And we don't have, we don't intend on it going on forever or trying to milk it dry or anything like that. So this was this was well done. I will say though, I've also seen comparisons of this, and we got into it the other day about this, so I'm going to rehash this just for the people, uh, <laughs> which is people, I've, I think I saw this on IGN where they're like, they want, they're constantly, or all the big, you know, nerdy media sites are like, they're trying to compare it to Game of Thrones. And I was like, you can't compare this to Game of Thrones. It's feudal Japan, and it's like medieval-ish you know, but fantasy. Game of Thrones is medievalish fantasy. You know what I mean? So no, but that's what I'm saying is Game of Thrones is medieval fantasy. Like this is this is feudal Japan. Like there's no there's no fantasy at all. Like there's this is somewhat Depends historically on how you look. based, right? Like uh, the samurai have always been looked at in a fantasy type way, mm -hmm. and even with the way people respect samurai and warlords, it's always been that way in Japan. But my argument is that people shouldn't be comparing this show to Game of Thrones. They should be comparing Game of Thrones to Lord of the Rings. That's more mm -hmm. that's more appropriate for me. Even though they're movies that that one's a movie and one's a show, I just feel like it's because they're the similar genres that I also they're both books and I know Shogun's also a book, but that was yeah. only one book as far as I know. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, Lord of the Rings but it was technically one book, but when it went to get published, uh, the publisher said, Hell no, we're not going to publish too much this much for it. <laughs> huge book. We'll do it in three parts. Well, yeah. we can do it in three parts for it, yeah. And that was after, like, one of the CEOs of the publishing company bent over backwards to get it done because uh, he got the company from his father while his father was running the company. He got to test read The Hobbit and really loved it. And was the one that approved the Hobbit for print, so he was biased towards Tolkien. Well, okay. So he made it happen. Okay. And I guess nice. that works out, but I mean, I haven't even seen, again, Shogun. This is one of the ones that I haven't had a chance to watch, but just on initial reading, I would agree with you, Paul. Like, you should. There's, this is. They're different. It feels like they're different. Well, yeah. Not, they're not going to compare Lord of the Rings with Game of Thrones for one main reason. Uh huh. You're Lord of the Rings is better? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're not going to compare something that you know doesn't stand a chance. Well, I mean, I would. it's tough to say that this is better because it's so different, but obviously the way it ended, but it's one season. I, once again, to me, I'm going... I'm like, you're you're not comparing apples to apples, right? You're, you're comparing things that are completely well, different. The, the, so... The biggest difference was Game of Thrones was mostly planned out. The only problem is... It, the show went downhill once the books ran out. Mm -hmm. Shogun could stay good because it began and end with the book. That's right, right. why they're refraining from making a season two because they're like, no, we're not going to we, be Game of Thrones. <laughs> we're not going to try to write. We're not going to try to write a sequel to someone else's work. That we're not going to build to match. Right. Yeah. It's not going to work well. For right. Us. If we want to do that, we would have done an original story. Yeah, yeah. That's probably what they're thinking. Right, which we'll, we'll talk about original stories here in a minute. What's the grade? What's the grade? It's a must-see. Absolutely. It absolutely is a must-see. Like I said, this isn't for everyone. It's definitely for me. It's definitely for intellectuals. You love, you know, Japanese culture. You love learning about other stuff, you know. Uh, it's, it's and, and, yeah, 
It's phenomenal. Must see. Must stream for sure. Taking it to heart. Got to do it. <coughs> yes. More stuff I got to catch up. So we have our merch that we're sporting. Uh, I have the Fallout stuff, which might be going away off the site after this month because we're going to be reducing our site to only 100 products. So this is probably going to be going away because it's merch of the month. After that, it's, it might be going away completely. I mean, if you still want it, we'll, we'll find a way to get it to you. We can make that happen. But it's not going to be on sale because this is the only time that it's going to be on sale with free shipping. By Grabthar's Hammer. What a saving. Uh, which is the... It's the vats and then it says... So you're telling me there's a chance? Like from Dumb and Dumber <laughs> from that meme. Uh, so I love it. And there's all kinds of shirts. This is the tank top. And this is a small which works for me. And then I also have the... X-Men hoodie, uh, which I love, and, and it's so great. It's not too heavy. Um, this is a medium, and uh, it, fits, it fits pretty good. Um, and then, of course, I have, the, I have these Ninja Turtle shorts, and then I got my, um, my Mortal Kombat socks, which I don't even know if we're going to... We're probably going to get rid of a lot, a lot of stuff. Like I said, we have to reduce our store a lot, so it's, it's, a lot of this stuff is going away, but if you want it, hit us up for it. And we'll, I'll even hook people up with codes if they, if they want. Just, 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 just message us. But yeah, just message let us. Let us know and we can we can find a way to make it available for you to purchase it. Yeah. It's yeah. not a problem at all. I'm rocking my uh, Talk Nerdy to Me Ninja Turtles shirt. Probably one of our best shirts we have here. Live, laugh, love. Yeah. <laughs> That's just awesome. <laughs> and yes, that is Star Trek font right there. And I adore it. It makes me happy. Yes, so, and we yeah. have other ones. I have, there's another one that says live long and prosper. There's also another one that has the uh, Spock quote that he says to, uh, to Kirk when he's dying. Um, so, uh, yeah. But I almost felt like maybe we should have gotten him the, the shirt or be like, you know what, you guys switch shirts. You know, like, because this guy's spitting the... But this is the ambassador. That's why he, he has the nerd knowledge. That's why we call him the ambassador. My so, parents are Trekkies. He's so, he knows this stuff. So, <laughs> that's, yeah. That's how I know. My parents are Trekkies. So you just have to know that kind of stuff growing up in a Trekkie household. Mm. So, but yeah. Uh, and once again, you know, we're going to do the shout outs. Shout outs always to Atticus as our number one shout out. And then uh, we have Amerame Media as well as others, M M uh, MK Jekyll and Hyde makes uh, comics. They're phenomenal. I love their inspirational posts. And uh, yeah, we have, uh, we have, don't we have another one that? Oh yeah, uh, we're still working on getting a collaboration with them. But the Horror Fiend, I was talking to one of the main guys that runs it. And uh, yeah, they 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 do mostly like horror movie type of stuff, and then they're gonna do a nerdy nerdy uh, channel as well. So it's great to see them joining that. Uh, uh, one of one of the guys that's heading it, he, he used to work at a comic book shop, so I think uh, he's gonna have a really good perspective on nerdy things. Oh yeah. Excellent. Yeah, I I, remember, I see. I feel like I see him at all the cons too, or I usually see him at the cons. So. Well, for New Mexico Comic Expo, he was head of security. For oh, okay. Like, there you go. That's that's why. There we go. Wow. So, all right, cool. I did fail to mention too that five percent of our profit goes to a charity of the month. We have a different charity of the month for the month, every single month. Uh, for Abril, it is Autism Speaks, and then for. Mayo, it's going to be national. Uh, it's the the it's Nami is what it is, but it's it's mental because it's Mental Health Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. It's related to that, so that's what we're going to be uh, donating to for next month. So uh, I believe that's it for us, right? Yeah, that is. All right, cool. So talk nerdy to me. Stay nerdy, planet Earth. Keep it real. Keep it nerdy, man.